Vermont just seemed like the Republican effort to repeal and replace Obamacare was dead as a doornail. Now, though, the Senate has come up with one last-ditch attempt to pass a new bill. It's called Graham Cassidy by the end of September because this is the last month where the Democrats can't filibuster it. So what are the chances this thing could actually get the votes it needs in order to become law? Well, I'm pretty skeptical. If they couldn't do it before, it's hard to see how they'll make it happen now. The market has started to take the new Republican health care bill seriously. How do I know that? Just look at the stock. It's Centene. It's a company that provides health care plans for beneficiaries of government-sponsored medi- uh, programs like Medicare, Medicaid, and the Obamacare exchanges. Centene's stock soared after the GOP's previous efforts at health care reform failed. But in the last week, it's been obliterated, falling from 98 down to 89, including a near $5 decline today. So investors were that this latest bill might actually stand a chance of passing. Whatever your political opinions are, there's no denying that slashing federal spending on health care coverage would be really bad for a lot of these companies, since most of the business is already funded by the government. In fact, a week ago, Centene announced that it's buying Fidelis. It's the largest Medicaid-managed care provider in America for $3.75 billion. This could be a smart merger if Congress doesn't do anything to roll back Obamacare. But if the bill passes and cuts Medicaid, well, we got to find out what will happen. Let's get a better read on the whole situation with Michael Nydorf. He's the chairman and CEO of Centene. Mr. Nydorf, Welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Always good to be here. All right, I want some truth because, once again, have a seat. I hear this. Wait, if this passes, it would be bad for Centene. Everything's bad for Centene. Everything's bad for Centene. And yet, no matter what the regime is, Centene does well. So first, tell us why that is. And second, tell us if this thing is any good. Okay, first of all, I'm going to talk about Centene. If they pass this bill, we'll do okay. We know how to do block grants. We, we're very decentralized local relationships with states will do just fine. From a public policy standpoint, there's no way this should pass. Why? Why? Because you're going to have have 50, potentially 50 different health plans in every state. The funding is not known. States don't know what they're going to get or not take going forward. They're rushing through a piece of legislation. They're not thinking about what they want to move to. The thing about what they want to change. So, I mean, if that's the case, why would they ever want to do this? They'll be all be kicked out of office next year at this time. You no, know, they're not thinking about that. All they want to do is they they want to boot it to the states. They're talking about trying to pass this, but it has a lot of resistance too. The uh, there's a group of bipartisan governors that just wrote a letter to both Schumer and McConnell that said. Don't do this. This is not good policy. Okay, so let's let's take Centene for a second. Centene has indeed figured it out because we know that your company has done well, but also apparently have the people who use Centene. But a lot of other companies can't possibly make money in this regime, correct? No, I think they'll have a lot of trouble because they're worried about the block grants. I'm fine with that. Now, tell us people why you can handle this, and I know that you're very locally oriented, and why the other guys haven't, because well, see, aren't you all the same? See, we are because we're local, and most of them are very centralized. Right. You know, there's a big difference. There. Plus our systems. We have systems that we can manage it. We can work with the physicians. We put the physicians at risk, shared risk, but not a risk they can't afford to take if they manage it right. So we have a lot of things that work for us. We have systems that predictively tell us how the, what's wrong with the patient, where it's going. So we're supporting the doctors. You can plan on that. But doesn't an Optum have, uh, do that for United Health? Optum has some of that, sure. Right. But if you look at it, the two companies that are best positioned for this are ourselves and Optum. Right. I agree. Absolutely. Now, Fidelis, I, I, the one, I wanted you on because I thought this was yeah. such a brilliant deal. And then this yeah. thing happened. Your stock soared five. Fidelis is a good outfit. Yeah. What are you and Fidelis going to do together? Well, what we're going to do, they are a great company. They're, they're profitable. They do well. They have the right mission. They, which is consistent with us, right. taking care of people that need it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give them systems that's going to make them even more effective than what they are now. And that's what they saw when we first met several years ago. They loved the systems we could offer. And so it's going to be just a really superb. And management stays, right? Because oh, management's supposed father, to be very good. Father Frawley, all the management staying. It's going to be business as usual, using our balance sheet and our systems just to strengthen them even further. Now, and what was important for us is, if you're entering the state of New York, you, you can't be tippet. You, you can't tiptoe it. This is the largest plan they have in this business. We want to be there. It makes us the largest company in the four largest states. Right. Now, Very let me... Very important. All right, just to sum up, if, even if this passes, Centene will do well because you're local and you understand how to handle this, but you're saying it most likely won't pass, and if it does pass, 
disastrous. I think it would be really bad policy. It would, in two, two years, you'll be talking about this like we talk about the ACA now. They're trying to pass a very important piece of social legislation in one week. Oh, well, that's great. Nobody knows what's in it. Well, that's just perfect. All right. Well, that's Michael Nidorf, the chairman, president, CEO of Centene, who has been dead right on the show the whole way that his company could make a lot of money. And I'm convinced in this regime or in any regime, they'll know how to do it. Stick with Centene. Stick with Kramer. Booyah! Jim Kramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.